Arid, I'm Lee Hawthorne. Welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> going to completely level with everybody. I recorded four interviews today and didn't record any of the intros for them. And now it's dark and I'm having to use the lights of the house. And yeah, uh, but go and watch all of the videos. Uh, this is the second one that's coming out. So squads will already be up. Uh, and the swine tax one that I did last week will already be up as well. Uh, and then we've got Lady MC and Sweets coming up in the next few days. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll get all that great content. Uh, you will notice a, a costume change in each interview, despite doing the same day. Uh, I thought it would look better in a different clothes, and then I forgot to do the intros. So here I am. Uh, but we're about to get into the interview with Chido Arata, a rapper who I'm a massive fan of and has had some amazing accomplishments in the last couple of years. Uh, Darcy is one of the biggest songs of the last few years. More of a kind of a funky house kind of mixed grime vibe, but it was all over grime, Spotify, editorial playlists and various other things as well. Um, he was the official remix for Thotiana, which was one of the biggest songs other than Darcy of the time. And yeah, he's just done some amazing things, representing Hull, putting Hull on the map. And he's just an amazing guy. And yeah, let's get into it. So you've just released the, uh, the new single, Outlaws. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me kind of just a bit about the song, the kind of influences, what it's about, that sort of thing? So Outlaws came the, came about, sorry, like probably beginning of this year. And I, I, I was working with a couple of new producers and, and the, the guy who made this is called Blend Productions. and. I wasn't really too sure about the drill thing hmm. because I didn't want people to think, oh, he's just jumping on the bandwagon because it's like the new popping thing at the moment. But I just wrote a song to it, recorded it, didn't really think much of it, anything of it really, and then played it in front of a few of my friends and a few people and they, they really loved it. So I just put it out. And like the song is just about like me sort of growing up like I can't really talk about some of the things that the London drill artists talk about like jumping out of the 4-4 four four or chefing down the ops or anything like that. like I can't relate to that that's not me but mm. I can just talk about like the street culture of where I'm from so I used to be a little bit of a naughty lad when I was younger and really that's what that song sort of talking about yeah it's an interesting one because I think it's uh, it feels like it's still very you, like the the content and stuff. I think like some of the stuff from like pre Darcy, there there is kind of that content was still kind of there. Uh, mm. But I think a lot of people who kind of maybe's discovered you through Darcy and then the kind of the EP that you've just released uh, a few months ago, yeah, uh, wouldn't expect it necessarily because it was very kind of I would have it on my gym playlist on me kind yeah. of playlist and stuff like that. I don't think I could put outlaws. Maybe it's on my gym playlist, but not so much on the pre-drinking playlist anyway. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's funny you said that, Lee. To be fair, and I think I was a bit conscious as well, uh, releasing like Save You a Taster and uh, Outlaws because I know people. Re what recent fans anyway will only know me for sort of like the more upbeat stuff but I've been making stuff like this for for, for ages ever since I came out making like more hard-hitting aggressive rap music anyway so yeah. for me this is more the lane that I'm going to be going down anyway like moving forward yeah it felt like a good time to do it as well because I guess uh, the songs from the kind of EP and Darcy and Flex and stuff like that yeah you have more songs that you would perform in a club or here in a yeah. club and that's yeah. all, obviously that's not a thing at the minute so I think yeah. it, was there a kind of conscious decision there to kind of okay we're not going to do any club stuff can we kind of do a different sound that's going to kind of be more reflective of the current situation that we're in uh, you know what maybe because like when we released War Chant it was just the wrong time bro like that War Chant's like a proper clubby sort of like fist pumping banger like Oh, I think we released that right. It was the wrong time to release it. It was like bang in the middle of a pandemic, bang in the middle of the like the whole like the Black Lives Matter thing. Like it just wasn't the right time. Uh, and yeah, maybe subconsciously, yeah, maybe I did do that. But to be honest with you, I wasn't thinking about that. Though. I just, mm. I just had a, I just had a, uh, the uh, like an amount of tracks that I wanted to release this year, and Outlaws was one of them. So. But, like, oh, I'm just gagging to perform live, man. Gagging. 
Yeah, I imagine you're missing that a lot because I think it's from what I do know of you, it's kind of a lot of what you do with uh, kind of lockdown and stuff like that. Obviously, you've done your own kind of nights and stuff. So, like, it must be yeah. something you this. Really yeah, we're, like, missing it so much. Like, and as well, like, obviously, because I've released a few tunes, I've released Bianca, Save You With Taster, Now Outlaws. Like, I just know, like, these would just go off if I perform them. Like, and I'm just, I'm just gagging, yeah, man, just to, like, perform, man. And I imagine that, again, it's kind of <laughs> worse for you again because the trajectory that you were on, I mean, the way that you ended 2019, mm. it seemed as if, like, 2020 was going to be the year that you yeah. obviously were starting to kind of make waves around the country and, like, London yeah. was starting to pay attention to you. And it's like, you could have been touring and everything. And, yeah. <sighs> Lee, mate, Lee, don't even get me started, <laughs> bro. Like, you know what I mean? It's, I try not to get too upset about it, but, it, like, I ain't going to lie to you, mate. Like, at the beginning of the lockdown, everything you just said then, that it that's all I was thinking about. I was like, 2020 was supposed to be my year. Like, we had a good 2019 with like men behaving badly. Like, and then obviously the war chat, I think would have just done, um, like, I think it would have just done amazing over the summer periods. And yeah, man, like everything you've just said is what I was thinking at the beginning of lockdown. I was so negative, like proper down in the dumps. Yeah, man, like, uh, but luckily, like, I just pulled myself out of that and just wrote loads of music. Yeah. So I can't complain in terms of writing. I've done loads of writing, like, next year. Like, I've got so much, like, music to put out. So I'm spoiled for music, to be honest with you. Like, mm. so, yeah. Just looking behind you there, is that lyrics or is that a to-do list? That's a to-do list, mate. Ah, wicked. I, yeah, I, I, I like... I'm trying to <laughs> trying to keep organised every week. It's every Sunday. Every Sunday I'll write like what I need to do in the week, mm. and I'll just tick it off. More like a mental thing. Yeah, I do the same, but I have it like a note. So I've got a whiteboard behind my laptop right now. It's got kind of notes for the for the interview, and then I've got uh, a notepad that's just like full, and like both of them every day, I uh, wipe them clean and like do a to do list. And it's yeah, but it, it helps, doesn't it? It's, I think, especially with the pandemic, there is an opportunity for to kind of be more productive in certain ways. It kind of it helps to be organised, doesn't it? No, definitely, it really does. Yeah. Uh, so with this single, anyway, uh, produced by Blend Production, who yeah. I've not heard of before. Uh, is it somebody? Yeah. Is it from Hull or? Yeah, he's a Hull lad. He's from just outside of Hull, uh, from a place called Scaler. I think he's from, like, just a village from outside of Hull, mm. and he's just a young kid. Very talented producer. He loves the drill, though. So, obviously, the drill's the new thing for the kids, in it? So, yeah. most beats he sends me is drill or trap-driven. But he's just very talented. He's been working, like, closely with D's kid. Uh, I think D's has, like, took him under his wing. We, we both have, really. Yeah. And he's been coming to our studio loads, and they've just been working hard, them two, making beats. And every time I roll to the studio, there's always, like, beats on, on the table for me. So, he's sort of part of the camp now, the lockdown camp. And yeah, I'm spoilt for beats. I can't lie. There's like DZ, Blem, and there's another kid called Six Wolf as well who produced uh, Bianca. So yeah, I'm spoilt for beats, definitely, man. And I'll be working with Blem loads in the future. We've got loads of tracks together anyway. Yeah. How important is it for you to kind of work with that kind of producers that you know on a personal level as opposed to maybe it's kind of going and reaching out to that kind of say Spyro and like even these grime legends, would you prefer to kind of, obviously it'd be an honour to kind of work with some of them, but do you prefer yeah. consistently working with the people that you know? You know what it is, Lee? Like for me, I'll, I'll work and rap on any beat if I like it. I don't care if I know them or not. But to go back to what you said, or say, sorry, it has been good to actually get to know Blem and know Six Wolf. Like, they're, they're now friends now, mm. where before they were just they used to just send me beats and I didn't really know them. But now they've actually been in the sessions where I've recorded to their beats and we've drank together in the studio and we've just vibed together, man. Like, it's good. It's good that I actually know these guys on personal levels. So, yeah, like I said, yeah, I'd love to work with, like, some of the main guys, like the Sir Spiros and people. But I'm not chasing that, mate, because that, that time's going to come. That time will come when it's supposed to happen. But right now... I'm just happy with my, my stable of producers, Dees, Blem, and Six Wolf. Yeah. You mentioned Dees there. Uh, is he working on much? Because I know he does, he does his own uh, thing as well, solo. 
Is yeah, it? yeah. So D's this year D's has released two singles on his own. He's released one with a kid called Vital from Wolverhampton called Playing Games, produced by himself. And then he's done a song recently, well about a month or two ago, called Wake Up, like a drum and bass one produced by him. Yeah, I think he's working on his own stuff. I've heard a few of his bits and bobs. With D's though, sometimes I don't think he likes to be the main guy. All the time, he likes to be like the guy behind the scenes and 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 being the producer. So I think he just needs to find a, a balance there. But yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of his stuff, and he's very sick. He's very talented, man. Mm. So watch out for like his stuff in 2021 because I think he's gonna he's gonna come with some with some fire. Yeah, I watched back the Say Spyro Cipher that you both did. Uh, oh yeah. It's interesting, I read the comments as well, and there was a lot of comments saying Hull Boys, you know, all that. Yeah. And then there was a few that said D's, there was a few that said you. And it was like really nice to see, especially uh, looking back and seeing who's in there, kind of Coco being a relatively established name, uh, yeah. dialect being incredible, legend of Leeds, uh, yeah. and Graft, obviously, who has now just this week become a bit yeah. of a star in the UK. Uh, so it was nice to see that you being Hull Boys kind of like took over and like really made that your own. Yeah, what did you think of that set? Now, now watching it, like, has it, has it, has it matured well? The set. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't watch it all to be to be completely honest. Yeah. I watched, watched kind of, I kind of skipped uh, just so I just watched yours, D's, and Graft's bars. Uh, yeah. because I'll be honest, I didn't remember Graft being on there. Uh, yeah. When I kind of first watched it, I don't remember being like impressed by him really. Yeah. Uh, but then seeing because I was you know doing research for this interview, but I'll watch it again and I seen Graft's mm. name. I was like. Oh, he is on there, and he, he does well on that. But I, I do think that you was kind of really took it, and yeah, I think uh, there's a there's a definite bit uh, where you go back and forth, or at least you are kind of hyping each other up. Uh, yeah, and, and it's like it's amazing, and I think there's like yeah. it felt like a special moment. No, it was a special moment, a big moment to go to that building, and to be fair, man, and like I remember walking out of there that day and feeling that I did rubbish, you know. Nah. Yeah, man, I can't believe it. Like looking back, I can't. Like, I remember me and Deezy walking, because my missus lives in London, so I'm back and forth all the time. And I remember me going back to my missus in Walthamstow and thinking, oh, we did, we did rubbish. Me and Deezy, like, sort of biting at each other, like, saying, like, oh, we did rubbish, and me getting angry, me getting angry with him and him getting angry with me. And then we, we listened back and, like, yeah, we killed it, like, absolutely <laughs> smashed it. And I, and I remember after it, and it's always good to get... Uh, it's always good to get the tilt of the hat from you from your peers, isn't it? Mm. And I remember like after it, like dialect, AK, like even Graft, Irish Paddy, everyone was saying, Oh, Chado, you was the man of the match, you killed it, you killed it. And me, I know what I'm like at that time. I didn't want to hear it. I was like, no, nah, I did I did crap, I did crap, man. I like I did rubbish. You're just saying that to make me feel better. And then obviously when I watched it back, yeah, man, like I, I really think we represented. Yeah. I think it's like I think the best kind of uh, sign of how well you did was the live reactions, especially yeah. I think it was dialect, but also Coco. Um, yeah, in the kind of the background, there's a bit, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what it is, but I think it's like the last bit that you do, yeah, um, yeah, like, that, last... know, that you're like a chav or it's a chav in you, uh, yeah, yeah, that last bit. segment, yeah, 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 they, they loved that man. I remember, and, and that obviously dialect, someone that I used when we I, like because Leeds and Hull's quite close, mm -hmm. you always hear of dialect's name in terms of grime, and then like. When you go to Leeds, sometimes he, he busks, he does busking. And, like, he's just a local legend. And, like, yeah, to be there and he's, like, rating the thing, man, like, it was good, man. And, like I say, it was just all all momentum leading up to 2020, innit? And then, yeah, we just, we've just had this, which is just annoying, but it is what it is. Just got to come back stronger. Yeah. How did you feel? Uh, did you watch Rap Game UK? Yeah, I watched it, man. Yeah. How did you feel like seeing uh, a, a lad from Leeds win him? Because there was a lot of kind of Birmingham and London acts in there. Yeah, I, I, was, I was rooting for him mm. from the beginning. Obviously, being on that set with him, I knew he was sick. And then, like, for him to win, I was so happy because I just thought, in my opinion, he was head and shoulders the best. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was the most versatile. Uh, and, I, like, it, I wanted him to win. But if he didn't win, I thought maybe maybe Leisha, maybe I liked her, the girl, uh -huh. the other girl. Do you know, do you know think Zones? Because for me, Zones was like the most consistent throughout. And was yeah, positive. Zones was good as well. But you know, the thing is with Zones, the reason why I liked Leisha as well as Graft, like Graft was head and shoulders the best in my opinion. Mm. But underneath uh, Graft, 
The reason why I liked Alicia is I just thought that zones. I don't know if she could just fall under the stereotypical London pain rapper, but mm. I suppose she had a bit of a different story because she was she was like a girl and she she wasn't like sexual, so she was good. That that them three was my favorite three anyway, definitely, yeah. definitely. But I'm just happy. I'm happy. Uh, Graf brought it back to Yorkshire. Yeah. Do you think it's like? starting to show even more so because obviously we had like Bugsy Malone and yeah. whatever that was and it kind of we thought at the time oh they're not going to take it and then it didn't really happen to me and then kind of coming through there's we've kind of graphed and now there's a few others kind of bubbling up like do you think that there's they're starting to kind of accept northern grind and whatnot more or do you well, think the, the, very... the, the, the thing is though Lee is they need to because this is my hunch sometimes like yeah I get it <clears throat> I get it we have to work harder up here yeah because the scene is centred in London a couple of Birmingham artists are filtered through a couple of Manny artists are filtered through but if these if these quote unquote taste makers are, are really taste makers surely it should just be the quality of the music and surely you should want to champion difference do you know what I mean like me, Graft, Coco, like we're from Yorkshire and we've all we've we've all got different stories to what you're playing all the time. So for me, if you're if you're supposed to be a tastemaker, it's not like the music's bad. If the music's bad, I understand, don't play it. But in my opinion, the music's good. There's a lot of good northern artists. If the music's good, you should support it no matter where they're from. And you should want to champion having different types of voices and different stories on your platforms. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Who have you found? Have you found anybody that does that, do you think? I think there was a time for you, at least anyway, uh, you got a lot of support from Spotify when yeah. Austin was there, Austin Darbo. Was it, I don't know if it was him personally or what, but it seemed as if once he left, it kind of stopped though. So I don't know whether... Yeah, well, you, you could say that. Yeah, like obviously he went to Apple and then he's gone on to Atlantic now doing great things. And yeah. you got people like Austin because he gave like, do you know what I mean? Like a kid from Hull, a platform for his music. And do you know what I mean? No one's done that. And no one's done that since, really. Uh, <clears throat> except for like big up Toddler T, who was at, oh, was at Radio 1. He's not there no more. But he's a Yorkshire lad himself. But again, he gave my music a platform. And his producer at the time, Luciano, who was, was a great kid as well. So there has been bits and bobs. <clears throat> but I don't think there's enough. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's not enough, and it's, it's it can be it can be quite frustrating. And <clears throat> my journey might be a little bit longer, but I, but I will get there in the end. Yeah, I do feel that frustration even from me, like for you from me kind of thing because yeah. there is no way that a rapper from London or even Birmingham would have had a song like Darcy, who what has three million streams on Spotify alone, mm. and was like the most played song on the the rap playlist on Spotify. Yeah, like, there's no way that if that was a London or Birmingham rapper that they would not be like a superstar now. And, yeah, and consistently putting the music out they released afterwards as well. That's like, what I'm saying, man. Like we we definitely had some moments, and it, it's and there's been some frustrations as well. And, and to be honest with you, Lee, I have had label experience off the back of Darcy, hmm. but with a London label and big them up like, like uh, definitely an experience that I needed at the time, but I'm back independent now, man. I'm back just raring, raring to go. And like you say, mate, like it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a madness that someone who's had some of the successes I've had is not a lot bigger. And like I say, it might take me a little bit longer than everyone else, but I will get there because one thing I'm confident about Lee is, and now to make good songs. Mm. And I know that my stage presence on stage is very good. So I just need to keep on applying the pressure, mate, and making the music. Yeah, definitely. You, I think you're definitely on the right path. It's just, I think you're doing everything that you can, essentially. It's just mm. with all these tastemakers, like you say, to notice that they do need these different voices. And hopefully yeah. Uh, speaking of kind of different voices, I guess, for on a kind of biased level from me being from the northeast, uh, there's still nobody that's really kind of even got to your level uh, mm. from kind of Newcastle, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, even. Uh, I remember seeing you uh, at a festival uh, a couple of years ago, and mm. it was kind of a disappointing turnout, I think is fair to say. Uh, yeah, you were set. 
but you still kind of absolutely smashed it and it was yeah. probably their favourite performance of the day. Mm. How important is it for you to kind of have that experience where you go to a, a gig, festival, whatever, and there's not many people there, but you still give it your all? Mate, you have to, man, because I'm used to perform. When I, I'm from a place where Hullway is pr- predominantly indie bands and guitar music, uh, and I'm sure that's the same in Newcastle, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I'm like, when I first started performing, like I used to perform to like his man and man and the dog. Do you know what I mean? And it can be frustrating, and it can kill your your, your morale and stuff like that. But you've got to realise that there might be one person in that room that's going to buy your merch or follow you on Spotify or follow you or, or follow you on on YouTube or whatever, and then they're going to tell people and it can be a bit of a snowball effect. So you've always got to think like that. And and for me, especially when you're going out of town, expect it to be like that show. And then if it's better, then <clears throat> you're winning. But I just want to do as many out of town shows as possible, man. Like I'd love to do that festival again. Like, yeah, man, I'd love to do, I'd love to do loads of stuff. Yeah. Great. Um, and I remember at the end, uh, 90 Bro, who was a rapper that I know very well, kind of yeah, came. Yeah. And apparently you have some sort of history with yeah. him in some form. How, yeah, how yeah. Into them? Just we spoke to, spoke to each other on socials. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Facebook we first ever spoke to each other. Mm. And just seems a really good kid. He's always been supporting my music. He's always shared my stuff. And it was just good to book up with him in, in, in Newcastle, man. Like, same with, is it reality? reality? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> He's cold, man. He's decent. First time I met him was that festival. Yeah. And we're, meant to, we're meant to be doing a track, but it's just, yeah, man, schedules, man. Schedules and, and, and right into the beat, man. And to be fair, he's probably going to have to send me something it something else. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I'd love to come down and do a show in Newcastle, man. Obviously, yeah. I'm a Newcastle fan. Yeah. I've got, I've got a love for the city. I've been there numerous times to watch Newcastle play, and, and I've been on numerous nights out as well. Hmm. So I'd love, I'd love to do a performance there. Yeah, what made you a fan of Newcastle? Was the uh... Alan Shearer man when I was younger? That that's basically it, mate. Like I was just Alan Shearer obsessed. Mm. So as soon as he moved from Blackburn, that's when I became a fan, man. See, I had the opposite thing. Uh, so despite being from Newcastle, I'm an Arsenal fan. Uh, oh, right. Essentially because of Henri, like yeah, just yeah, magical. Uh, yeah, what a player. Yeah, uh, and I do know to be fair uh, the. Lad that ran the festival that you played, uh, Charlie Dancer, he's called. Uh, he's just left the company that run that festival. Uh, oh, is it? But, I, but I know he has spoke like a few times to me about bringing you uh, back here. So I'm hoping that once we're allowed to do gigs on that again, I'm going to push for him to kind of get you back. Because yeah, definitely, man. I just need to just for me now. There's no point in me doing gigs in Hull. Right. Like yeah, there's just I've conquered it, mate. Like about twenty times over. Like I need to. I need to be reaching out and getting the fan base outside the city so any any of these northern cities definitely like mm. I, I'm up for it man Where, where's where's Charlie gone then he's gone to another place or uh, he's just <clears throat> started waiting for a record label called Brutalist okay. um, which from what I gather is quite new but they're based kind of between Newcastle Manchester and I think it's Plymouth or Portsmouth I'm not sure which mm. one or maybe it's some, somewhere down south anyway um, so it's literally just started from what I gather like in two mm. weeks ago. Um, so just kind of find his feet, but uh, it might be worth messaging them. I don't know why I'm saying this on an interview, but yeah, yeah, well, uh, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. Defo, man, Defo. Um, what's kind of your experience kind of outside of Hull then? Because I guess you know, if you had that festival in Newcastle, um, I'm assuming you played some shows in Leeds, and yeah, I've done, I've done, what have I done? Have I done one in Leeds? Don't think I played in Leeds, you know. I've done a few in London. Right. Went on what tour last. What you say? Where have I done in London? Yeah. Uh, what are they like down in London? Yeah, London was six. Our last live gig was for was for Clash magazine. Right. Uh, and we supported an artist called Well, you'll probably know him. That that uh, drill artist called Pounds. And I'm not familiar. And there's another. <laughs> and there was another grime artist called Capo Lee. I know Capo uh, Lee. Big fan of Capo Lee. Yeah, we 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 supported them too. Uh, well, it was like a, it was like a it was like a showcase, but I think pounds topped the bill. That was my last live show. That was sick. Did a tour 
beginning of 2019, uh, where we where we've taught. I did Hull as a date. Where else did we did? We did Birmingham as a date, London as a date, Bristol and Manchester. That was sick. Mm. Such a sick experience, man. Like Hull, Hull was definitely the 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 the, the, the homecoming show. It was so sick the Hull show. Uh, the Birmingham show was good. Manning was good. It was all good in their own way. Mm. Yeah, I've had some good experiences outside of, side of Hull. Uh, like we used we did we did a festival two years in a row in in a Hastings, which right. is like really down south. Great, great to be fair. Like proper sick. So yeah, man, I've had some good shows outside of outside of Hull, but it's just I just need to do more, man. Yeah, do more. Well, fingers crossed when yeah. all this blows oh, away. Hopefully, Lee. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the things that kind of are in your control. Then, like, what is the plan? I'm guessing there's no more music coming this year. You've got the visual. Nah, coming. I was gonna, I was gonna do some. I was gonna do a hell. I was gonna do Helly Anson four. Right. I was gonna, but. I think I'm just gonna wait, man. Wait, wait till next year uh, to release something. It might be Helly Anson. I don't know. Yeah, my first release. I'm not too sure, but yeah, that's probably gonna be my last release. I've got a video, the video for Outlaws, which is gonna come out on Wednesday. Hmm. Uh, and then for next year, mate, I'm just flooding the year with music. I, I promise. Like next year, you're gonna there's gonna be there's gonna be a few projects, and yeah, you're just gonna see music man because i feel like that's that's the most important thing like, i'm trying to not get myself too bogged down about playing the industry politics and being upset about not being on certain lists and stuff like that like i'm just trying to like not do that and just keep in my own lane because that's what i did like i was really i remember being real frustrated about not being on any like ones to watch list uh 2000 and the beginning of this year I remember yeah. being quite frustrated about not being on them, but you know what? Like I've realised that them lists don't mean nothing. Like obviously it's good for clout and recognition and stuff like that, but if this if this industry don't rate me or if people don't want to give me a chance, then you know what, man? I don't want to mess with them either. So I'm just doing me, like you said, mate. No, what? Like for me, Lee, sometimes I don't give myself enough credit. Do you know what I mean? Having conversations with you is always good because you remind me of things that I've done. I'm one of those guys who once I've done it, it's out of my head and I want to try and achieve the next thing. But sometimes I even forget that I've got tracks like Darcy. I forget that I've like that track did over 309, did, did 309 days on Graham shutdown. I think it's the eighth longest track to ever be on there. Like, you know what I mean? I forget that I've had BBC introducing track of the week, so one extra and stuff. I forget all that, man, because I'm just too busy chasing. But then in a way you need to sort of slow down and remember what you've done. But yeah, man, like I've just got to, yeah, just keep on going. Yeah, I think that's a very artist thing to do that. Uh, you mentioned reality earlier on. And I remember, I think it was only about a year ago or so, I was talking to him and reminded him that he headlined the O2 Academy in Newcastle and like yeah. that he forgot that he'd done them. To me, that's mad because how do you forget yeah. these like amazing things that most people will never do? Mm. So I think it's definitely worth kind of just remembering that not only are you sick, but you have achieved a lot. Yeah, no, yeah. no, definitely. I think it's just because we there's so much that we know we want to achieve more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And like for me, I put a lot of pressure on myself. Like no one's really done it from Yorkshire. Like yeah, we've got Graf now who's run the Rap UK, but still, like there's no one that's got over that hill and mm. like become like a house hate, a household name. Do you know what I mean? Like we haven't got a, we haven't got an H or a Bugsy Malone or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Like and we, th there's room so much room do you get me like and i think i think i think the thing about being northern whether it being like yorkshire or the northeast where you lot are from like we've all got we've got sick personalities we're so infectious do you know what i mean like you put us on these 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 interviews or these platforms and people are gonna love us do you get me and like, and i think sometimes that's what i have a bit of a hunch with because i feel like some of these big london artists You've got such a big platform, but when you when you're seen, you're so wooden. Yeah. Do you get me? Like you can't turn off the roadman persona for one minute. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like you're scared to even laugh because people might look at you as soft or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like with Northerners, we're unapologetically raw and we're just unapologetically like fun people. Do you know what I mean? Not saying Londoners are not, 
but I just feel like there's too much of a stigma attached to it where with us, we don't have to be like that, man. We can be freely ourselves. Yeah, 100%. Uh, where can people find you online to keep up to date with what you're doing? And So you can find me online, Oraka LD, which a lot of people get wrong. They try and spell it like oracled when it's not. It's just Oraka LD. So it's just O-R-A-K-A-L-D on on uh, Instagram and on uh, Twitter. And then, yeah, just subscribe to my to my Spotify, my YouTube, new video dropping on Wednesday. Yeah, man, like, that's me. 